to solve them, I'll give you some specific examples. How many of you here have never done a puzzle? Okay, so you have some experience. Too many people ignore them thinking they're hard, but in fact they are not, okay? Uh, I'm going to go over some general information. Um, when a puzzle comes out, take a look at it. Is it easy? Is it something you recognize? You might want to consider printing it out. Uh, you can look at it easier. You can uh, eyeball stuff. You can make notes on a piece of paper. And as far as the paper, I keep them after I'm done with them. If nothing else, I write the final coordinates on them. So when someone calls and asks me, what did I end up with? I got something, even though I can't remember how I solved the puzzle. Um, however, when you do print puzzles, you have to watch out how many pages you're printing. There is, there was a binary puzzle up in the Apple in there. If you printed it, you got 27 pages, which was totally useless. So do watch that when we're printing them. Uh, also, if you print a page, you might hit an Easter egg. If you don't know what an Easter egg is, it's a hidden text, and it might be white on white that doesn't show up until you print the page, and then all of a sudden there are the, there are the coordinates for you. Very simple one. Uh, again, the puzzle's out there, you look at it. Is it something you recognize, something you can do? It's a harder one. Put it aside, think about it. Uh, quite often people will be mulling a puzzle over, they can't figure it out, they put it away, and then all of a sudden they're talking to somebody else and something pops into their head and says, oh, that's it. Um, another function, or another way of working with puzzles is when it comes out and you're not sure what it is, put your name on the watch list. Watch other people, what they're saying with, about it. Every now and then, someone will post a note, either a find or a note of some type, and they might mention something, not necessarily leading directly to the puzzle, but it gives you some idea what they were doing. Uh, and actually, you will find occasionally a puzzle, let's see one. Team B Squared up in Northern Michigan had a puzzle called, Watch This Puzzle. Very simple. All you did was put your name on the watch list, and every week you send out coordinates for it. That was it. So, um, the other thing when you find a puzzle, look at everything on the cache page. Uh, what's the name of the cache? Are there attributes? Are there hints? What's the owner's name? Um, most of you are probably familiar with it. You do not have the hatch have the actual owner's name shown in the cash page, you can have other things. That might tell you something, or if you click on it and find out who the actual owner is, that might tell you something. The happen cash is where, if you click on the owner's profile, it gives you the coordinates on the, on the profile page. So again, they're hidden all over the place. Um, again, I mentioned Easter eggs, they're common, they're in various places. Is there a photo on the page that might tell you something? Um, what's the difficulty of terrain ratings? If it's listed as a 2 2, that means it should be fairly easy. Unless you get somebody that's being obnoxious and puts down a 2 in the back that's a 4 or a 5, which happens. Um, what's the date the puzzle was placed? Sometimes that will give you a clue as to what's going on. Um, and again, reading the prior logs or having a watch and seeing what people are posting as they find it. Um, are there words in different colors? Are there capital letters stuck around in random places? There's all sorts of hints that usually show up on cash pages somewhere along the way. Uh, backtracking to one thing, pictures or photographs on the page. Uh, I have one that is still active in the Green Bay area that is a photo, that's it. You have to figure out what the dimensions of the puzzle or the photograph is and use them to solve the puzzle and you will see them in other places. Um, some, page, some puzzles will have um, a solution calculator. There is a GeoChecker, which I use, and down here, the common one is events, which I do not like because I cannot read the code word that you're supposed to type in. But anyways, those are available, they're handy. Make use of them. Uh, they may not they'll tell you you got the wrong answer, maybe, but at least you know that you got a wrong answer as opposed to a right one. Um, another 
advantage of having printed out the cash page is you've got the numbers there in front of you. What are the posted coordinates? So like in this example, it's 44, 15, whatever. Um, puzzle center. The guidelines say the puzzle fake coordinates should be within two miles of where the cache is hidden. Um, you will find examples where they're further. Sometimes the cache page will tell you that. Sometimes the owner is obnoxious and won't tell you that. Um, look at the map on the page. Does that tell you something? I'm going to show you a photograph later that when I saw it, it was like, boom, I know where the puzzle is. Um, this afternoon, DJ, I believe, is the one that's giving a demonstration on GSAC. GSAC has a wonderful feature of keeping a database and corrected coordinates for puzzles so that when you solve a puzzle, you can put the actual coordinates in. And carrying it from there, what I do is I have a mapping program where I'll take the actual coordinates for the puzzle and transfer them to a map with a one-tenth of a mile radius. And I've actually found other puzzles by looking at where these puzzles are and where is there an open space. Walk down the trail, look at the big tree that they talk about. So, never found the coordinates, but I found the cache. Um, believe it or not, it also helps to look at other locations. You're here in Milwaukee. Doesn't mean you can't look in Springfield, Illinois for puzzles. And what are they? Eau Claire. They're all over the place, and you will find quite often puzzles are duplicated. Again, going back to B squared up in Escanaba, he would cache down in Grand Rapids. Michigan, find a type of puzzle, he copied the idea up in Escanaba, and myself and a couple of others have copied the idea down here in Wisconsin. So it's like, you're getting the same puzzle all over the place. Um, also, it's just sometimes if you're looking at a puzzle in another location, it's similar to the one or the same one that you're looking at it here, and someone makes a comment on the one state in Illinois and says, oh, this is how I figured it out. It's like, boom, you got your answer. And going back to like what Ron mentioned in the end, should you be asking someone else who found it? I'm going to say it's 50 50 and it's up to you. About half of the people I talk to will ask the cash owner, the other half will ask other cash finders for help. It's, there's no rules on it and it's, fit, and it's throw it up in the air and do whatever you want. One side issue to that is I've had some cash owners where I've contacted them and asked them for questions or help and I don't get an answer. So it's like, okay, what's your choice then? <coughs> um, okay. Let's start with something called how far is it? This is going back to Knowing the numbering system helps you figure out if you're within a two mile radius of where the fake coordinates are. So if you've got a coordinate 44, 15, 492, the degrees, each one of those degrees is 60 miles. The middle, the minutes are one mile each. And if you think about the minutes, how many minutes are there in an hour? There's 59. So when you get to 59, you go to zero, zero. And in seconds, you have 1,000 seconds. Now, there's rough, there are 5,280 feet in a standard mile, so dividing that by 1,000, you have roughly five feet for every second that you move. It varies over the globe, but it's just used by five feet, and that's gonna give you the rough idea. So if you have fake coordinates of 15, I'm sorry, the seconds in the, the minutes in the middle, if it's 15, you could be anywhere from 13, 14, 15, 16, or 17 for your answer if it's within the two miles, and generally most of them are. Your phone is making noises. <laughs> Let's go back 
aspect of this puzzle for a second. Looking at the cash page will also give you some good ideas as to what you're looking for. In this example, you have to look for 15 digits. Some of them will only ask for 10 digits or 12 digits. So the more digits you have to look for, the easier it is to solve. Who can tell me what A is? Exactly. What's D? Zero. C. That's going to be iffy. But you can see, based upon this, you got four, 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 etc. You don't have too many numbers to look for in this thing, so he's pretty well giving you the answer. I have done puzzles where I've asked for 15 digits, and I've asked for 10. If you ask for 10, that really restricts. So you're only asking for the second digit, I'm sorry, well, 10 or 8. If you ask for 10, you're getting the first of the minutes. If you only ask for 8, you're asking for the second, and it could be anything. You got five choices in there to look for. Some of this information is on the WGA website, so you can print out copies of these things. This is a graph. Oh, that looks terrible. Okay, I need help zooming. Where do you go? Ron, come over here and help me zoom this thing out. You'll find a number of puzzles that are based upon codes. You have to do letter frequencies. And I have a graph. It's over here someplace, but I don't remember which one. Go the other way. There you go. That's good. It's on the WGA's website. It's also a nice little sheet to carry around up in the wilderness with you because it gives you, this is the ROT 13 code, it tells you if you're going to do a letter of the alphabet equals such and such a number, here's the listing. Also some simple things that looks obvious, but writing out the numbers just as a real quick reference instead of handwriting them out every time, so if you're doing a code, and it has three digits, well, which number is that going to be? And then what I know is the order of operations when you're doing the calculation. You're doing parentheses, multiplication, division, etc. There's a symmetry puzzle up in the Wild Rose area that involves horrendous math intentionally, but this comes in handy. Binary, 